8830 Idaho. Interview Series, Kelly O'Dell, interviewed by Jeremy Maxson. All right, welcome folks. Uh, my name is Jeremy Maxson. I'm the Executive Director of the Living Independence Network Corporation, or LINK, um, in Boise, serving Southwest Idaho. We're a center for independent living. And uh, we're joined this evening with Kelly O'Dell uh, from Boise, who we're going to be talking with as part of the uh, interviews we're doing for the 30th uh, anniversary of uh, celebration of the Americans with Disabilities Act. Um, we're gonna talk with Kelly this evening about adaptive recreation and the history of some adaptive recreation programs um, in the Boise area and the work that he did and, and some of the lives that he impacted um, with, with that programming. Kelly, welcome to, welcome to the interview and thanks for joining me. Thanks, Jeremy, I appreciate it. This is, uh, this is, this is fun. Um, I, uh, I'm really excited to talk with you and um, I know a little bit about your history and, and, but I know a lot about the program that you helped start um, that uh, really has led to uh, the city of Boise's adaptive rec program and, and, and all of the lives that have been impacted by that. And so we wanted to take a little bit of time and just uh, learn a little bit about you and how that program uh, got started and uh, where it is today. And, and as we do that, we might weave in some, um, uh, some discussion about the Americans with Disability, Disabilities Act and uh, what you experienced and saw before and after that as it relates to the programs that you were involved with. How's that sound? That'd be great. I'll, I look forward to it. So let's jump into it. Um, and I've got my uh, Idaho oh, good. Adaptive yeah. Sports cap on. I had the pleasure of being uh, a coach a summer or two ago um, in Boise at that program, and and it was fantastic. Um, I can I could I could see right away how uh, how and why it's had the impact that it's had over the years. So. Why don't we just start with you telling us a little bit about you and and where you where you're from and um, and if you're not well, from Boise, how you ended up here? Yeah, well, I um, I I grew up in California and um, was my family used to go backpacking in Idaho and and then uh, in, at the uh, at the end of my uh, high school career, I was contacted by a counselor at at the high school in. in uh, in uh, San Jose area, and uh, she said, "Well, there's some, somebody coming to town to talk about the College of Idaho, and you should go." So she knew my our backpacking and camping scenario, and so so I did, and I um, that was kind of the beginning of the end. I uh, the, the but the <laughs> the funny story of that was the the in it was an uh, athletic director that came to do the talk and and somebody said well is is there skiing out there well sure there's the chairlifts right outside the dorm and this was in caldwell idaho right this is where i was going and uh so of course the last thing that was there was a ski lift out the dorm it was more it was a stockyard actually right across the street from the university <laughs> so when i drove onto campus that was uh, we everybody was a little surprised but um, that was in 1974 and um i that, like again i it was the beginning of the end so i uh, graduated from the college of idaho um, and uh, and then i got into a um, graduate assistantship at the university of idaho in intramurals and adapted recreation mm -hmm. so and it was under recreation therapy so we uh, i uh, applied and received that position and was in uh, in moscow for a 12 a 12 month program that they had which was a federally granted program so that was exciting and then i uh i graduated and moved on to uh, I moved to Omaha and I was uh, where I did my internship and then I got a job there and I was there for a couple three years and then moved on to I always wanted to get back to Idaho and I and through physical medicine and rehab and finally through many steps and and multiple years to, not to, to shorten the story but um, 
worked my way into the Elks Rehab Hospital, uh, and then over to St. Al's. I opened up, myself and two others opened up the uh, St. Alphonsus uh, Rehab Center, and then I was there for about three years, and then went over to the Elks, went back to the Elks Rehab for 22 years. So, um, and then I, where I am now, I'm at the, at the Boise VA working with veterans uh, mm -hmm. with disabilities, so. So that's uh, and while I was at the Elks, we made that I made the determination that Boise was missing opportunity for um, athletics, adapted sports for youth. So we um, I took a, basically a um, I'm going to say a year and a half to investigate that who who I, who was I going to collaborate with what kind of support I was going to have, and then to find another sports camp for kids with disabilities um, somewhere where I could go visit and see what it was all about. Mm -hmm. So the only, the only camps going back then was uh, in Santa Barbara, and that was also through their Parks and Rec. So I, I spent two, two weeks down there, two separate weeks down there, uh, just – helping working taking notes uh um and then i just pulled the trigger and we we did it and uh, we started out with uh eight eight kids and uh, year one and we were using the uh, we were using we we're able to collaborate with boise state through their adapted program called amis which stood for the alternate mobility adventure seekers mm -hmm. now although that program was mostly directed to college or older uh, adults uh, they greeted us with open arms and and it was fabulous so we had a nice run on tennis courts and uh, swimming pools and basketball and uh, we were we did some uh, climb uh, rappelling off of the stadium and uh you know archery air guns all kinds of things you know it was it was fabulous so and that was the beginning of building the relationship with adult other adult wheelchair users in in uh, in, in boise and uh that really you know as wonderful as the camp has been and what it's had the impact with families. I, uh, I have to say that uh, the, you know, the, the value was as great to the coaches as it was to the kids. Mm -hmm. You know, we had, we had some adults that uh, wheelchair users that had just been injured and certainly unsure of themselves, uh, lacking confidence, all those things, you know, that uh, yeah. the camp really, really, had them shining you know it was it was exhausting i will say but it was a you know they thought if i can get through this you know i i'm gonna be okay I'm gonna yeah. Be okay. yeah well talk a little bit about what it was like um back in those early days um with equipment uh you know like recreation today adaptive recreation today is so so much more high speed with all the the custom wheelchairs and titanium yeah, light yeah. light chairs and and back in the day i i can't imagine you know i remember back in 1989 ending up in a chair and and that technology probably, was pretty day. <laughs> yeah it was pretty it wasn't real high speed and and yeah. so i'm kind of curious how y'all cobbled together what you needed to to run those programs well you know the, the big deal was of course a lot of these kids so so I would say, you know, twenty percent of the kids had spinal cord injuries. We had lots of spina bifida, cerebral palsy, uh, multiple physical disability things. So, a lot of the families only only knew what they knew, and, and or what their doctors told them. Yeah. So, the doctors were not very sophisticated right. either, and that was a big training piece of of showing the uh, the medical world what was you know what kind of equipment's really was coming coming on i guess you know and of course now there's all kinds of companies but uh, 
yeah, so that it was kind of a double, uh, double sided of, of teaching the families, but also the, the medical world. So, but the the biggest deal was, you know, they had uh, the 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 clunkers, what we would call the clunkers, heavy folding. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you you can appreciate that, I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, uh, but we, you know, we, we just, they, they only knew what they knew. So those, a lot of, most of the kids is just go, go as hard as you can. And, uh, um, that was a big part was once, once the kids were sh able to show families or friends or start asking, Hey, can I, can I join the track team at my high school? And I, of course would say, hell yes, you can. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and so I, I did field many calls in regards to that, um, you know, people that weren't particularly happy about it, but at the same time, you know, it was, it's, it's time. Uh, and, and the, and the population of wheelchair users in public schools is, it, you know, it's not a big number mm -hmm. and equipment is expensive. So, uh, we assembled some fundraisers, uh, grants uh and to get equipment for uh for kids or we would have hand-me-downs we would put the word out you know out just put the word out and somehow like many things you know you you have none and then all of a sudden you got eight and <laughs> and they were all in my garage <laughs> jeremy <laughs> <laughs> so. you know kelly t talk a little one of the things i noticed at the camp um the summer adaptive sports camp through the city of Boise, which I think was like a, where, where this ended up. Um, one thing that was really great was that when you get all these kids together or adults or kids or whoever, but when you get everybody together in the same room and everybody has a disability, everybody uses a mobility equipment or, or has something they're, they're dealing with, um, it really changes the dynamic. And, all of that fades away and people are able to just, um, you know, experience uh, life as if life were quote normal because everybody around you is the same or they're all dealing with something. Um, Absolutely. Unique. And, and was that what you found and, and, and what kind of impact do you think that hit had on just the, you know, the trajectory of young people's lives. Yeah. Well, I would, again, that's, it was kind of a double fold because, you know, most of our volunteers were younger people, you know, high school kids or something, but that was also where it was very eye opening for them. And, uh, but as, a, as a kids um, were, you know, there's, there's no complaining. There was no complaining. There's no, uh, uh, no issues of I'm I'm tired or I'm I you know I can't do that because that person next to them might have a worse disability than they and they're they look over there and say oh, oh okay I get I guess I can which which leads to a story we were doing a we were doing a some downtime and we had a, a craft program and one of the little uh, athletes that we had Hatch came in with. Uh, no arms and all she had was uh, like a fin and she was able to have two toes on that fin and we had a young man that had been shot uh playing with a gun and was shot and was a was a complete quad mm -hmm. and uh we were trying to get him to paint with a with his mouth and so he was up against this other gal they're playing uh, working one by a side by side and he's I can't do this and then he looks over at this young little gal who's painting with her fin and he just stopped he says oh I guess I can try <laughs> so you know again it was uh it, that was kind of an impact for him and that was a, a luckily that was early on in camp and he uh he had a great camp um the, the rest of that time. So uh, I, I think it washes over on all of them. And I think the other piece is a lot of these kids had not experienced competition, meaning like we all do, I want to be faster than you. 
and that kind of made me push that wheelchair a little harder. And that's really what that's really what we are after. What what can you do, right? Whatever the motivation is, what can you do? So that's go a little you know, harder, that's go a little faster. That's what I noticed watching, especially the young, the really young kids uh, in the little tiny chairs and at the, at the yeah. sports camp. Um, just how ferocious yeah. and unstoppable they they were at, at this particular camp uh, a couple years ago, and and you just yeah that fire is in everybody, and we have to you know it's so important to ignite that fire and exactly. that passion because it exactly. drives us in so many other ways, yeah. uh, which is why these types of camps are so important. It's just yeah. it's fundamental, and yeah. we we used to I don't know if they still do it, but it, we used to have like a little. A, a basketball tournament and then they would uh but we would all come together and in the center of the gym and by this time camp was up you know we had 30 30 to 35 kids and then 30 to 35 volunteers and all the staff and everybody's in the middle of the gym screaming we're number one and that was um that was very emotional and i i can still feel that right now actually just uh, that it was so powerful because these again these kids are you know don't get that opportunity yeah and 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 where did at what point at what year did the program end up at the city of boise uh well we started 88 uh I'm going to say we were at Boise for five or six years, five or six years. And then uh, they dro BSU dropped the, the uh, alternate mobility adventure seeker program. And then they basically that shut us out. So when I went back out, <laughs> I went back out hunting for, for space and that led us to, uh, to uh, parks and rec and uh, a gal by the name of Patty Butler. I don't know if you know Patty, but uh, she has been involved in uh, disabilities for you know many many years. So, but uh, she was the she was had been hired, and, and of course she was like, "Yeah, let's do it." So that was the beginning of that, and uh, we've been there since. So I'm gonna. I told you that we it was gonna be you and me on this interview. Um, but I, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, bring someone else in and surprise you. Um, let's see here. We've got one guest and he'll join us on zoom. Oh, <laughs> Jake was, was one of the first eight. Yeah. He was one of the first eight, and he's connecting here. Hey. Jake, how you doing? Good, how are you? Hi, Jake. Good. Hey, Kelly, how are you? I am great. How are you? Good. Yeah? You kind of keeping a low profile with everything going on? Um, a little bit. I'm yeah. still working, so. Good. Keeping busy there. Right on. So for our viewing audience, um, we have been joined by uh, Jake Simmons, who is uh, a relatively young man who was one of the first eight in the adaptive sports program that Kelly uh, booted up. And, um, and Jake, I'm going to let you talk about that experience and kind of how it changed your life and what you um, were able to do um, through and, and after that program. And, um, yeah, you want to take it away? Okay. <clears throat> um, so yeah, I was part of the first group from the sports camp and it, I mean, it, it opened up a lot of different opportunities for me, um, showing me and showing my parents that I, I could do anything that I wanted to from playing, playing wheelchair basketball to wheelchair racing and both of those sports were um, a huge part of my life and i have a you know deep love for both of those 
um, both of those sports may, especially racing, racing had opened up a lot of opportunities for me. Um, I was lucky enough to be able to be a member of Team USA three different times and um, traveled all over the country. Um, and I've set 18 national records, or let's see, I've won 18 gold medals, 15 national records, um, lots of silver medals, bronze medals. So I've you know, had the opportunity to do, to do a lot of really cool stuff that you know, without the sports camp, you know, that probably wouldn't have, that wouldn't have happened. So I owe a huge, huge, huge thank you to Kelly and everything that he's done. So thanks, Jake. You're you were stud. I can't remember where you, did we did we find that wheelchair for you or did you did you and your dad how did how did that your um first, your first I, chair I think the very first chair a green one I remember a green yeah yeah I think I was actually the first person to ever have the neon green chair <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah it was a beauty yeah it was um. And I think even at the sports camp, I think they have at least one or two of my old chairs oh, there, still, yeah. possibly. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Wow. Jake, what was it like um, at the camp being around other, other kids who, who had disabilities? And, and how is that different from not being at camp or just being in school? Um, what, what was that? What was that impact on you like? Um, <clears throat> it was, I, mean, I enjoyed it, you know, made some really good friendships with a lot of the campers, you know, during those few days that we were there because we spent a lot of time together with each other and, and, um, and I'm still, you know, still friends to this day with some of the ones that, that are still around um, from that sports camp. And, you know, it's, it was a, like I said, it was a good special time. I had a great time there. I looked forward to it every single year. And, you know, never, I haven't had the opportunity to um, coach or anything there. But since I had been working and so my schedule had never, you know, been able to um, work out. But, you know, it's, I, like I said, I loved it. My parents, you know, loved it. And, and I think that very first, <clears throat> the very first year, my my parents were there at the sports camp, and they filmed like everything that was there. And not too long ago, I was going through some old tapes and and found <laughs> I found that tape, and so I was able to go through and watch all that stuff. So oh, wow, yeah, it was pretty cool. I remember when Jake went over to one of his first big races in uh, Fort Collins, uh, and my wife and I we we jumped in the car and we went over to support and and uh, be a part of Jake's success. And uh, yeah, it was a it was a great trip. Yeah, the whole thing from start to finish, you know. Internationals. Oh, that oh that's right. Yeah, yeah, internationals. That was your first international, I believe. Yeah. Yeah, first junior national wheelchair championships, and it took off from there. Wow, that is that's an amazing that those are a lot of medals and an amazing accomplishment. Yeah. Um, that's that's incredible. And what Jake, what do you think? Um, being an adult and living your life these days, what what um, what do you draw on, or what what do you think back on? as some of those key lessons that you learned from sports camp that you kind of carry with you today? Um, <clears throat> like I said, just the, the friendships that I've made from it and, you know, just showing me that, you know, even though our lives are, are different being in chairs, you know, whatever level of disability that we have, you know, it's, it's possible to do anything, anything that you want. You know, like I said, I, before sports camp, I mean, I had been around sports with my dad and stuff, but, you know, I didn't know that I was going to have the opportunities that I did with the, you know, chances to play different sports. 
and and in my family it um we're all very you know very competitive so mm -hmm. you know, when we play in sports we take it serious <laughs> <laughs> but, but even chair <laughs> And what do you, Jake, to, and just, just to, to wrap it up a little bit, what do you do? Cause you know, you, you move on in life and, and you're not doing the Olympic athlete stuff right now, but what, what do you do to get out and enjoy Idaho these days? Um, I kind of know, I've looked at your Facebook page and seen some pretty, pretty amazing uh, adventures that you've been on, but um, you know, where, where are those adventures taking you today? Um, you know, I try to try to stay as active as, as I can. I love, love the outdoors, love hunting, love fishing. Um, you know, I've, I've had some pretty cool opportunities within the last few years of hunting with some different, um, hunting, hunting celebrity personalities. And mm -hmm. like I, I went on a bear hunt back in 2016 and killed a nice bear. Um, you know, it's i've luckily i've been able to you know get out and enjoy you know the area and you know, go up to the mountains because we're not that far you know an hour drive and we're up mm -hmm. in the mountain so you know we can get out of here and my parents try to you know take me along with them if they head up to the cabin or something and every every fall i do a lot of waterfowl hunting with my dad so you know i pretty much if I can get a day off during the week or for sure every weekend I'm out with my dad. So, you know, just try to enjoy it as much as I can. And while I, you know, still can fairly easily, you know, without mm -hmm. too much help. And, you know, the older that I'm, the older that I get, you know, things start to hurt a little bit and I put on a little bit of weight. So I got to, you know, watch that a little bit, but, you know, it's, I, um, I try to do as, you know, as much as I can. It's, I love living here Been you know, born and raised here. So it's, it's definitely changed a lot, but you know, it's, you know, I love it here. So. Cool. Yeah. That sounds great. What a great surprise, Jake. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I thought it was a, thought it was a good idea. I was like, I was asked about it, and I'm like, yeah, yeah I would love to do that. That would, that would be cool. Because I think the last time I even saw you was at the Chair Hoops tournament. Chair, chair Hoops, I think. Not, yeah, Chair Hoops. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Jake, thanks for popping in and joining us. Um, I think yeah. that was a nice uh, welcome surprise, and yeah. great to get the perspective of one of the participants in the original eight, which is amazing. Yeah. Yeah, it's like I said that that opportunity was you know something that opened up a lot of things for me, and you know I'll for forever be grateful for it. Well, it was great that you the whole family you know supported you behind that, uh, Jake, and you know because they had you they came in from Napa to to Boise, you know, so it was it was a commitment. So yeah, yeah, I. You know, I just want to say thank you for saying yes, because uh, certainly, you know, seeing you every year and then your friendship over the years has, has been fabulous. And seeing your parents uh, get old along with me has been, <laughs> been good, too. <laughs> yeah, it's, I was, you know, I loved being able to see you every year at sports camp. And then after I was done at sports camp, then I was, I had to, you know, look forward to seeing it at the chair hoops tournament and getting yeah. to play basketball against you. <laughs> yeah, that's when life took over, huh? Yeah, yeah. that's true. I hear you. Happens to the best of us. Yep. <laughs> well, all right, Jake um, and Kelly, um, that's, uh, I think, gets us to the end of the interview. Um, we wanted to just talk a little bit about uh, your background, Kelly, and, and the genesis of the sports camp. Um, and then surprise you with, uh, with Jake, um, which I think we did. I think we surprised you. Maybe you knew. No, um, I didn't know. Oh, you didn't know. Okay. That's great. I had um, no idea. That's fantastic. <laughs> yeah. But, um, yeah. Do you have any, any last, uh, parting thoughts before we, we wrap it up? Um, I think parting 
thoughts on my end is, you know, how we started each day was to figure out how to bring experiences to our the youth and then to identify that always that question is, is it accessible? Can we, can we access these facilities or these events um, without, you know, without a, a great deal of, of, of issues? So, you know, I am very appreciative of Boise has, uh, you know, certainly come a long way just in terms of curb cuts and, and mm -hmm. being able to get to a, a variety of places that had prov provided our, uh, our kids, uh, you know, great experiences, you know, for the last, I think we're up to, I think the camp is at year 31. Wow. So, you know, we've been pretty fortunate. So I certainly want to thank the Parks and Rec and certainly for the city of Boise to, that have brought everything together. And along um, with the, the other ADA folks, uh, Bobby and Kelly over the years, I think mm -hmm. both of them are gone now, but um, you know, they had a strong hold on the ADA and, and so I, I think we certainly owe them a, some gratitude for, for that. So, uh, yeah, so I just, I just want to say thank you. Well, thank you. Um, thank you for the program that you have got off the ground and the, I don't know, the countless young people that you've impacted and the you know, the greater community that you've impacted as a result of that. Um, Jake is a great example. Um, yeah. And uh, I mean, I don't know that we could find a better example uh, with more well, gold medals. I think, Jake, are you still on? Yeah, I'm here. I, you were, were you seven years old then when you started? Um, I think I was, I think I was eight. I'll be 41 next weekend. 41? Yeah. Get out of town. <laughs> <laughs> oh that's pretty cool yeah i think lacy was six or seven yeah i think she's yeah. just a little bit younger than i am yeah <laughs> wow well guys thanks a lot for hopping on doing this interview um for all that you're doing in the community um and thanks to the folks who've uh tuned in at some point to to watch or uh experience this uh short conversation and uh surprise uh <laughs> surprise exchange um and uh, keep an eye out for the other videos that we're going to be posting with interviews uh of amazing folks like kelly uh odell and um yeah we'll see you at the next interview and uh, thanks for joining us a word collage in the shape of the united states with the word access highlighted and hashtag thanks to the ADA.